purple as well. So today we're gonna to be looking at the Matchbox D30 amp within the Fractal unit. So it's based on the Matchless DC30. So we're looking at an EL84 style amp. So lots of chime, kind of edge of breakup, and I'll show you how I set it up and the sort of tones that I like to use with it. So this will be in two parts. So the first part will just be a quick build of just the amp and the cab, or at least how I like to dial it in using my Kaufman Tele, which has very low output pickups. And then after that, we'll go into uh, a preset I made that you can uh, download using the links below. So quick build, we'll go for an in and an out as usual. We'll hook those up together. An amp and cab in the middle. I like using a clean boost at the start. And that's all we're gonna look at for now. So basically, we're just gonna be dialing in the basic amp tone, and then we're gonna spruce things up. So the first thing we're gonna look at is actually the cab block. So obviously there's a lot of options in terms of what cab that we can use, and this will be down to taste. Um, in my head, uh, I would be using, well ideally, I really like the sound of sort of amp heads through say a four by 12, usually with greenbacks. So that's what we're gonna be going for today. So in the cab block, we're gonna be selecting Dyna cabs, and then we're gonna go for the 1960 TV, the four by 12, and we're gonna be using two mics as well. So this is two condenser mics, and the amp is set to the Matchbox D30, stock settings, and we'll see how that sounds. So first off, volume is very low compared to say other amps or other presets. So that's the first thing that we can address here. I would suggest moving this up to say minus four or minus five, um, depending on the sort of output you want. And then we can see how that sounds. So we're already in a much better place. So the way I like to set up the cab lock here in terms of mics, uh, I tried a few things out and I really liked how say a dynamic mic sounded and then a ribbon mic as well. Uh, on EL84 kind of amps or Vox amps, class A style amps, I find the ribbon adds a nice kind of character to the actual tone. And then you can play around with the actual positioning. On both of these, I actually quite liked moving it a bit off center say let's say five here, a bit of distance away from the actual speaker. And we'll do the same here on both. So let's say move them to the same uh, amount and a bit off center as well. And what we'll add here already is the low and high cut. I like to go for a value here of say 80 on the low cut. And we'll go for 8,000 on the high cut here. So the idea behind these presets as well is that you can take them out for live use, for gigging and things like that. And I, I like to use these values as it, it sort of gives the front of house already a nice signal to work with. And these are additional things that they won't need to either think about or worry about. So you're already sending a nice, almost pre-mixed signal. So with these settings and the amp set as is with the level up, <laughs> So already in quite a nice place, and this is without using any reverb or effects and things like that. And what I like to do here to sort of control the amp uh, a bit more, I think that there's a bit, maybe a bit too much bass, so we can pull that back a bit. And then to give the amp uh, a bit of grit, but without pulling, pushing things too far on the master volume, I like to pull the master volume back a bit and then push the gain a bit. And the idea here is that we're gonna get a bit more sort of grit, sparkle, or whatever it is from the preamp, and we're getting less of maybe sort of power amp uh, saturation that might come into play. So it's already set up 
quite nicely. As I said before, this guitar has very low output pickups, so it can really help to add a clean boost at the start. So I've used the filter block here. There are different ways of doing it. I like using the filter block because I get a more visual indicator of when the boost is on or off, as opposed to using the one in the preamp page of the amp block. So we'll go for uh, a preamp boost of, or sorry, clean boost, say 6 dB, and we'll see how that kind of liven things up. And so that's the basic tone of the amp that I kind of really like to uh, play through. So as you can hear, it's, I guess you'd say, edge of breakup, or it's tinkering on that, on that sort of between point. And depending on how much you say boost in front of the amp and how you set this gain setting, you will get different shades of that. I particularly like the sound of when things are at that kind of level where you can dig in a bit more and you'll get a tiny bit of breakup maybe from the amp. So with the amp set up like this, I think it's um, also the perfect sort of pedal platform amp. So you can add all the various effects that you want in front of the amp, or you can use a combination of, say, delays and reverbs and things like that after the amp if you want to run to stereo. So the way I've set up the preset is uh, like a pedal platform amp. So all my effects are running into the front of the amp and the cab. So there's, there's nothing going on after the amp and the cab. I've set things up here so that we have a send and return here. So as we have a lot of blocks that we have out front. But if you feel like experimenting and having, say, delay and reverb after the amp, you can move things around and easily do that. So the basic setup is always going to be, for me, since I'm using the, the Telecaster here, will be the clean boost that's on going into the amp and the cab. And then I've added various other effects that I like to use when I'm either messing around or noodling, as it were, and sort of basic tones that I like to have on the pedal board that I can use at gigs, at sessions, and things like that. So the way I've set up scenes is that um, these are things that I would typically look for to running at home, and also maybe for sessions and things like that, where I have like a good clean tone, or a basic clean tone. I can also have a good clean tone where I've got a bit of compression, delay and reverb and things like that. And then I also have like a, a drive tone and then a drive tone with delay and things like that. And then an ambient uh, scene as well, should I want that. Now for a, a quick trick uh, that I've, I've done here. So on the um, tremolo that I've set up here, which is just before the reverb, you'll notice that the depth is slowly moving back and forth. And that's using the LFO that's uh, within the fractal unit. So the really cool thing about an LFO is it, it's basically a modifier that you can attach to anything that is modifiable. And then basically it will go between the two points that you set uh, within the LFO range. So to add an LFO so it does this movement, it's very easy. You right click on what you want to control and then you set it to one of the LFOs. We'll be using LFO 1A in this example. And you'll see that it's basically moving back and forth between two values. So I found that using a value in between, let's go for 40 to 80. We can turn off the attack and the release. And when we close this, we'll see 
that it's moving back and forth between 40 and 80. So you can also control how quickly it goes back and forth. And the easy way to do that is to go to controllers. You click on LFO 1 and 2 here. And then on LFO 1, which is what we've set that to, you'll see that there's a tempo switch. You can also set it to none and just have a rate. But I like to have uh, a tempo because then if you're doing a tap tempo, it will be more in line to say the delays and the stuff that you're playing. So the cool thing about this is with this movement, you get this other kind of effect that's going on, almost like a univibe. And I thought instead of using a univibe, I'd mess around with the tremolo block and add some kind of fun stuff to make it sound different. I will note that on the input block, I've turned off the gate and I've added a gate uh, on the preset for one of the drive blocks. So if you're gonna be playing rhythm and things like that, you have a gate that's gonna be controlling that extra noise. Of course you can take that off and then dial it to taste. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoy the preset. It's a lot of fun to play with and hopefully it'll give you some ideas on having sort of pedal platform amps within the Fractal unit and actually in the process sort of simplifying things. So basically copying the sort of rigs that you might have uh, used in the past or rigs that I might have used at home. So as I said, the preset is downloadable in the link below. It's free or pay what you want. A huge thanks to everyone who's checked out the presets and especially those who have left like a small donation. It's much appreciated and I hope you enjoy the preset. So thanks for watching. If you like this kind of content, please drop a like and subscribe. See you in the next one. Take care.